Okay, so I've just started up the uh, or rebooted the Raspberry Pi player. Um, as you can see, the box is really just a basic laser cut MDF box, really nondescript, uh, with uh, a tray really about the size of an average DVD uh, DVD movie. Um, it's just booted up, and that's the initial splash screen you get, asking you to place a DVD in the player or in the tray. Um, I'm going to pop. Well, okay, each of these DVDs have, um, you can just sort of make out at the top there's a little tag underneath the jacket. Um, that's an RFID tag, uh, and that gets popped on the reader um, and recognized, and the associated movie is played. So right now, um, this is an unidentified movie. We haven't associated this tag with any movie. So I'm just going to open up the top here to access the maintenance buttons. Um, we really are just simple three buttons um, it's up down and enter to operate a menu um, and i just need to get into the menu and then the options are exit or link a movie to the last scan tag so i'm going to link a movie to this tag um, a list of the different usb devices are shown i've only got one installed so there's only one showing up and Next is a list of the movies. Um, so I'll just go ahead and pick a movie. I'm just going to use a quick sample movie here. It's really just a short um, clip that just demonstrates what happens when you reach the end of the movie. So let me start that. So now that the movie is associated with the tag, every time I put this disc or this box on, it will play this movie unless I change it again with the menu. And that's it, short and sweet. So that screen comes up at the end of any movie you've played. Uh, as I said, that's really just a demo clip, so it's very short. Um, from here, I can um, play it again by just taking it off the scanner for a few seconds. The banner pops up to say, play some movie, and I can put the same disc back and start playing it. And if I don't want to associate this movie with this tag, I can change it by pressing a button, bring up the menu, link a movie, and go and find the actual movie I wanted for this. Let's pick the party, and off we go. And that's a really, really simple to operate. Um, and if I happen to be watching my movie and I want to go off to lunch, I'll just take the disc off the tray for a few seconds. It will automatically pause. There it is. And when I'm back, I just pop it back on again. I might prefer to put it on top like that. As long as the tag's not on the scanner, it'll detect that it's not there and it'll pause the movie that's playing. Uh, and if I now go and change the disc, it'll start the next movie, or in this case, tell me that the movie is unrecognized. Uh, sorry, I don't have a tag in that box. This one has a tag. Okay. New movie that's associated with something. And this one will make Legends of the Fall. So generally, the box will stay closed. That little goodie will never really be touched. Once it's been programmed, it's just a case of swapping the movies. Um, Take the disc off. It takes a few seconds to react because there's a, a pause or a little idle timer in the background that um, just keeps the CPU at low usage because it's always scanning in the background for movies. Pop the next one on and it starts the movie. That's really it. And if, if you run into any trouble and it needs a reboot, 
And it's paused. Okay, if it needs a reboot, there is a reset button at the back. There's no need to unplug or do anything like that. Just pop the reset button and it'll reboot. So accessing the USB drive is really simple. Um, this little uh, panel at the front is actually a kind of a slide off door thingy. You just pop it up and bring it forward. And then the top tray just slides out like this. And then slides up. As you can see, really easy to do with one hand. Um, we have the um, the RFID scan is the blue goodie at the top, and then we have the Raspberry Pi and our USB drive there. It's just a case of switching it off, obviously, popping the USB drive out and popping another one in or adding another one. Uh, there are four USB ports, so there's plenty of space. This has got 64 gig, uh, the one that's in there at the moment. If you happen to be using anything um, relatively uh, big, I'd recommend formatting it as NTFS. Uh, and the reason for that is a lot of big movies tend to be, um, you know, the movie files tend to be bigger than what the FAT32 system can handle, or yeah, XFAT or whatever it is. Um, the back panel over here also comes off. I'll do a separate movie for that, but you can access absolutely everything, including uh, the fan. There is a fan that operates on an automated circuit, basically. Um, it checks the CPU temperature and then uh, kicks in at, I think it's about 60 degrees when the CPU temperature reaches 60 or 65, it kicks in and then switches off again at 50. It's a really silent fan. And I'd say 90% of the time it's gonna be off. Maybe in summer it'll go on occasionally. Um, but for the most part, it really just sits there like this, closed up and uh, you know, whoever uses it will just pop a movie on and, and take the movie off. That's really it. And then popping back together, as you can see, those little goodies there are designed to slot in and clip downwards. And that's it. Without knowing, um, you know, about that little panel that slides up, I think mostly it's, it's going to go undetected. Nobody's going to notice. Um, there is a gap at the bottom. Uh, and there are holes at the bottom to let um, airflow through when the fan kicks in. So obviously it's important to keep the um, the bottom here clear. Um, it's generally not critical. The Raspberry Pi doesn't get very hot at all. Um, even though it's an enclosed box, there, there are holes at the back, there are holes at the bottom, um, but heat should never be an issue. Um, playing movies on a Raspberry Pi with its GPU uh, is really easy for it and doesn't consume a lot of uh, uh, CPU cycles, so shouldn't, uh, should, shouldn't really get hot at any point. 